Hello friends, welcome to our channel Contemporary Literary Review India. In today's interview, I am with the author Ruchira Garg. Ruchira is a psychology graduate from Lady Shriram College for Women and has a master's in human resources from Delhi School of Economics with a career spanning over two decades with renowned multinational brands. She has been a speaker in several corporate and management events. She is also an active blogger and a storyteller and shares her thoughts on various professional forums as well as through her podcast which is available on all leading podcast platforms. She talks about women's independence in her novel Soda, Water, Lemon in My Mocktail. Before I move ahead, please subscribe to our channel. Yes. Hello. Welcome, Ruchira Gar. How are you? I'm very well, Kurshi. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Great, great, great. So would you uh, please introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. So uh, as you've already spoken my name, I'm Ruchira Gar. Uh, by profession, I'm an HR leader in a renowned MNC. I have had about two decades of a career in corporate MNCs with very renowned brands. Um, in addition to that, I'm also a speaker in various conferences and events. I have uh, written a lot of articles. I'm a blogger. I have my own travel blog as well. And uh, now I have ventured into writing books. It's Soda Water Lemon in my mocktail. It's my first uh, book, which is my debut novel. I also, when I'm not writing and when, I not, when I'm not uh, doing my work, I like to travel a lot. I'm a very itinerant travel. Uh, traveler and I feel that you know it helps it, I find it meditative because it helps me connect with people it helps me build different perspectives and I like to share it through my travel blog which is called the wonder bee and I've recently also started podcasting and I leverage stories in my podcast so that's a little bit about me. okay okay that's great very nice to hear that you are engaged in too many things okay that's great okay so how where and when uh, did the idea of writing books come to your mind? So I have been writing for a long time, Prashid, in different formats, you know, whether it is articles or it's in the form of, you know, the stories that I share through my podcast. And I realized that there is a lot of interest in, in le learning lessons through stories. So people don't write like reading a lot of books which have messages, but which are very boring and long and, and you know, a lot of self-help books often don't go with a lot of people but they enjoy stories and they enjoy messages coming from stories and that triggered me into thinking of writing a book as i experienced people around me especially women and the experiences that they were going through i wanted to express myself and bring that out to the audience and during the pandemic when all of us were building new skills that's the time when i thought that you know i should take my writing to the next level and, and start writing a book uh, to express myself and through the story convey the messages that I want. Okay, okay, that's great, that's great. So uh, you have written this uh, book, what is the title of the book? It's Soda, Water, Lemon in my Mocktail. Oh, oh, great. So what is all about your book, Soda, Water, Lemon in my cocktail, uh, mocktail rather? <laughs> yeah, so so the water lemon in my mocktail is actually the story of Mandira. She is the girl next door that most of the readers will relate to. Uh, you know, the, the kind of people who aspire to who dream big, who aspire to go places in life. Uh, in the Indian marriage system is a big landmark in everybody's personal journey. And she also gets married and moves to a foreign land. And this book actually makes the reader traverse with her through the various experiences that she undergoes many unwarranted circumstances and how does she find her identity in that kind of a scenario? How does she navigate those challenges and whether she succumbs to them and gives in uh, to how people want her to be or whether she creates her own flavors and uh, her own mock meal of life. That's what this book is about. Oh, 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 oh my God. So this is actually a very practical journey of a woman, okay, after um, marriage because all the time she has to go to husband's uh, home okay yes. yes this is the truth of our society okay so what is the response uh, to your book from the market so so far since the time the book has come out readers have uh, given me a lot of positive feedback across various channels 
most of them have been able to relate to the protagonist. They feel that there is a mandara in their house somewhere and it feels like it's their household story. Uh, a lot of people have also given me feedback that it's a very easy read and many of them who had stopped reading books have been able to read it end to end. So it has brought them back to reading. Uh, my intent has been to keep the story gripping so that it keeps the reader hooked on and once they pick up the book, they would like to finish it. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so uh, as uh, you believe that uh, women should uh, enjoy independence, in many ways in the society. So what type of society you imagine of? Well, we talk a lot about equality in our society. Things have changed over the years for sure for women. But that said, somewhere we also focus a lot on sameness. When we say equality, we actually think everybody should be the same. And a lot of debates that we see around us are, well, you know, the women can't do the same thing as men or men can't do the same thing as women. Equality, to my mind, is not about being the same, but it's about respecting the differences. And the society I imagine is where you know, women have an equal seat at the table to make decisions for their personal and professional lives. In a lot of ways, while they have made that journey, there are still many things that they leave on others to decide for them versus being the ones leading that decision. So that's my vision of the society. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes. That's, that's very nice to hear this. Because yes, um, uh, women have to suffer a lot because of these differences, and yes, limit there is a limitation, and all the time, even people from own family actually start speaking about the limitation. So, um, uh, do you have any angle towards your philosophy of uh, women's independence in your novel? So there are a few different messages in the novel, but one of the prominent ones, for sure, is around the financial independence of women. And when I say financial independence, it does not just limit itself to earning money, but it's also about making economic decisions. So a lot of women in our society, while they may be, the, you know, they may be earning a lot of money, they may be at very good positions, mm -hmm. but a lot of decisions regarding their taxes, their investments, you know, their bank accounts, all of these are still either joined or, or left to other members of the family and they don't get involved in those decisions. The house that they will buy, the car that they will buy is still discussed with somebody else. So that's the angle which I've tried to bring in through the story and how the protagonist also kind of you know, suffers for having delegated that and uh, and how it, you know, how the, what's the journey that she makes. And, and another angle that I've put in because this, this book is based in the pre-internet era and uh, even today we see a lot of it. There are stigmas around divorce in our country and so the fact that a woman has, you know, who has kind of had made a, one bad decision does not make her suffer for life and there is a second chance that everybody deserves and the impact of that on the family. So that's something that I've brought out in the book. Okay, so which writers have you read more and uh you think that uh, by whose philosophy you are influenced? Yeah, I actually like reading both nonfiction and fiction books. I'm an avid reader. Uh, one of the books which has influenced me, it's not a very verbose or big, big book, but it's a, it's a very simple book called Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. And the reason why the book influenced me so much, it's about this professor's journey who's, you know, who's terminally ill and, and how you know the writer actually goes and meets him every Tuesday till uh, the end comes. But the book really emphasizes a lot on letting go of regrets because you know you can't change the past but you can definitely brighten up your future by letting go of regrets. And most of us kind of keep festering on regrets through life. So that was a big influence on me. It also touches upon the importance of expressing to people what they mean to us while they are with us so when people are around we don't say things but when they are gone we go into their funerals and we talk about what they meant so it also talks about the importance of telling them while they're there and some of those flavors around the importance of people in our lives the importance of not regretting has come in my book too the other two writers I've, i read a lot are john grisham and jeffrey archer but i'm very fond of their fiction i've practically read all their books and I like their fast-paced writing, which is what you also see reflected in my with my book and the way the book is paced. Okay. So those are heavily influenced. Okay, okay, okay. That's nice. Okay, so uh, do we have any suggestion to aspiring writers? What they should start and how 
should they start writing if they are thinking of writing a book well as a first time author i can i can give my own experiences and share just what i went through most of us fall into that trap of you know i don't have the perfect idea or we have to have a great out of the world idea to write a book but essentially i just go back to think about like all of us have heard stories about once upon a time there was a king it's like we know that and we still want to listen to that story because of the fact that it's just how it's told so it's not don't kind of block yourself by thinking if i don't have an out of the world idea then i shouldn't write the book it could be an idea that everybody can relate to but it's just how one tells the story that's important the flow the language the speed all of these matter so it's it's more about a good quality book a well edited book versus you know just thinking about a great idea but not presenting it well hmm. so that would be my and the other thing i would just say is that many a times we kind of go while writing a book it's not easy to express yourself in a you know in thousands of words it's much easier to write a blog or an article in a few hundred words so one gets into that self doubt and at that time seek help you know, because i did that you know i spoke to my friends i spoke to people who were not directly related to me but some of their ideas gave me perspective so just the motivation uh, from somebody external really helped so seek help Mm-hmm. True, true, true. Abs- absolutely true. Okay, so uh, do you have anything to share in addition to this uh, question, questionnaire, or something like that? Well, I would just like the readers to request them to read my book and enjoy it. Uh, this is a story that I'm sure they will all relate to in some form or the other. It is not just one person's story. It's taken a flavor of our society. Uh, it's talked about a lot of nuances of the indian marriage system and what women face on a day to day basis so it's not only the extreme bollywood dramas but people like us who go through this and uh, i would encourage them to read the book and for those who are writing books i would really say go ahead and write one for yourself because it's a great feeling to be able to express yourself and when you have people not related to you giving you feedback that's that's a job well done so that would be my message to everyone and and thank you so much for having me here today okay okay thank you for sharing your valuable views i hope that uh, your book sells um, in in high volume thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you have a nice day